Hello everyone and welcome to another Crave video guide. Um, my name is Gooden and today we'll look at how to make cutscenes in Cray. Um, so before we begin, let me just build a little something. Um, it's going to be very, very quick. Uh, just a little bit of landscape here. Uh, let me just paint that as well. So we have something to make a cutscene out of. Alright, so now we have this wonderful bit of terrain. Um, now there are a couple of things that you're going to need uh, in order to create a cutscene. The first thing is that you'll need a camera. So let's place that in there. And the way I do it, there's probably a couple of ways to do it, but the way that I usually do it is then with a connector and with a timer. So now we have everything that we need. Oh, no we don't. Uh, we need a sensor as well. All right, so these four gameplay props um, can be used to create a cutscene. And um, for those of you that haven't already watched it, I have a video on the connector and on the timer. So go ahead and watch that. I'll put a link in the description. Um, watching these will make it a bit easier to understand what's going on here, but I will do my best um, to let you know what I'm doing and why I'm doing that. So first things first, um, Let's double click the camera, press on the camera test here, and let's just place it where we want the cutscene to be. Let's say here, looks cool. Or maybe here, doesn't matter really. Let's see there, so now we have the camera over here. Um, okay, so let's say we want the cutscene to start as soon as you reach this area over here. Um, let's just mark that with a little bit of terrain something like this okay now what we'll need to do now is that we want this sensor over here to activate something so we'll just send a power signal to the connector and we're gonna set the connector to equal one this means that when the connector receives one power input from the sensor over here it's gonna send power to something else all right and we want it to send power to the camera of course so, just drag the power all the way up here to the camera. Um, and I'll just show you what this looks like. We're gonna run into this area here, and now that activates the camera. I'm gonna run out, and it stops, because the connector is set to wild contact. We can just put this to forever, actually, and what will happen now is that as soon as you run into this area, the camera will be um, activated forever. But we don't want that. We want the cutscene to stop after a couple of seconds. Um, therefore, what we'll do is, and this is uh, where the timer comes in, we'll actually send a power signal from the sensor over here to the timer. And we're gonna tell the timer to count down. Just use the default setting here, don't show time. Um, and let's just set it to three seconds. And now after three seconds, we want this timer to actually send a power signal to the connector over here. So, uh, if you watch the uh, other video on the connector, you would know that when the connector is set to equal one, it it stops sending power when it when it has let's say two inputs, for example, because it can only send power if it has exactly one. So what we're doing with the timer here is that we're giving it another power input. It already has one from the sensor. Now we're giving it a new one from the timer. So that's actually going to stop uh, this power signal is going to stop the connector from sending power to the camera up here so let's just see if it works run into the area and one two three and we're back all right so this is of course a pretty uh pretty boring cutscene so what we'll do is we'll just uh take this camera maybe move it over here uh wait we'll just move it over here maybe Okay, and we'll actually add another component to this cutscene. Uh, let's just go with the directional mover. Uh, let's see, that's here. Um, let's place that somewhere close to the camera. And I'm just gonna turn it around, something like this. And we can just glue this camera to the uh, directional mover. And let's give this a speed. Something like this, maybe, like 15, I guess. Just reset, freeze. 
And now we're going to give this directional mover power from the connector as well. So it's powering both the camera, but also this mover. Um, let's see what it looks like. Run in here, directional mover and camera starts. And now we have sort of a cutscene-ish thing going on. Um, so let me just see. Actually, we should maybe turn this thing around, place it over here. Um, let's see, where are we now? There's something around here. Okay, let's exit this one. Let's give it a go again. Okay. So, let's just, uh, let's say we want to increase the length of the cutscene. The only thing we have to do here is actually just go into the timer and just increase the time here. So let's say we want it to be eight seconds, for example. This is basically just gonna make the cutscene be eight seconds exactly. So you can count in your head if you want to. Um, now, of course, you can keep adding these components um, to the cutscene, but I just wanted to point out that this is, this is the basic setup. It's actually uh, the sensor that activates the whole thing. And the sensor will send power to a connector, but also send power to a timer. And then the timer sends power to the connector after a certain amount of time, which cancels uh, the power signal and stops the, the, the cutscene, right? So if you want to add things during the cutscene, then drag power from the connector to it, just like we did with the directional mover. Um, and if you want to increase, decrease the length of the actual cutscene, that's what you do with the timer. And of course, if you want the cutscene to be triggered from somewhere else, you can just uh, just move around the sensor. Um, but let's just add a final component here. For those of you that have watched the Seeker video, you would know that um, it's actually possible to use a Seeker as sort of like a move mover. Uh, no, so, no, so like aimer, so a, like a look at function. So what we can do is that we can place a Seeker here and just tell the Seeker to look at the player um, without moving at all. So now we have this look at and vertically, that's fine. And now let's remove the glue from the camera here and instead glue the camera to the Seeker and then glue the Seeker to the directional mover. So now this is gonna keep looking at the character during the cutscene. Oh, we need one thing, <laughs> I forgot that. Since there's something during the cutscene, we'll go to the connector and just have the connector send power to the Seeker as well. And that should do it. Jump in here, run into the proximity. And now you can see it's sort of, it's more fluent, it's more smooth, it's, it's looking at the character at all times. Um, and this will sort of make a cutscene even more like dynamic and organic. Um, you can set the look at speed if you want it here, the turn speed, set that up a little bit. You can even, Maybe rotate this a little bit. Give it some more speed, let's say 25. Let's give it a go again. And as you can see here, the camera will keep looking at the character. Um, and you can do these, these cool cutscenes. Um, it's really up to you uh, how you wanna do them. It doesn't have to be the way I did it here. But I think, again, just keep in mind, the most important part of the cutscene setup is the sensor, which activates stuff the connector which receives power from the sensor and powers uh, the actual camera um, and then the timer that determines the length of the cutscene um, so guys that was it um, i really hope that this was helpful uh, i hope you found it useful um, if you have any questions at all just let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you as fast as possible um, and if you have another way of doing cutscenes i'd love to see that as well um, because this is, I guess, just one way of doing it. Um, you can play around with the camera transition times uh, on and off um, if you want to. It's, uh, it's just entirely up to you. Actually, let's just do that before we wrap up here. Let's say a transition time on. Let's get that one second. This basically means that, as you can see here, the camera moves from the character to the actual camera over there. And this can be pretty useful sometimes. Um, the transition off does the same thing. So when the camera is no longer uh, getting power, 
Notice that it takes uh, two seconds for it to sort of readjust to the character. Just a moment. And there we go. That was the two seconds. And it gives you more smooth transitions between the cutscenes in and out of them. Um, okay, guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, looking forward to see what you come up with. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you all in the next video. Bye.